Welcome to After the Checkered Flag. Lee Diffie and five-time Supercross champ Ricky Carmichael with you here in St. Louis, where it's a night that Ken Roxon and his wife Courtney and all of the HRC Honda squad will never forget because it's a turning point in Ken Roxon's career. Well, it was a night to remember, Lee, and you, you got to think about Ken Roxon and the emotions that was going through his head the last few laps. I would say probably the last seven minutes. He's like, hey, this is really going to happen. You, we all were wondering if it, when it was going to happen. He was probably wondering if. And uh, he got the job done tonight, and I really think that this is going to excel him. He's going to continue to win, and I think next weekend in Anaheim, he wants redemption from that place. I have to say that when we saw Justin Barsha getting within about two and a half seconds or so, looked like Barsha may have made the run, and you said, no, no. Ken's going to check out. And he did. Yeah, he what, did. What, what gave you that thought, that confidence in Roxon? Well, because he's just so explosive when he gets out in the lead. He did it a lot last year, but he wasn't able to close the deal. And uh, I just I just knew once he gapped uh, Barsha that the other guys that I thought would be a threat were just too far back. And uh, he set pace. And I, he just had that look. When I, could, when I watch him ride, he was silky smooth, not making any mistakes. I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's his night. Justin Barsha has a one-two result. First and second for the first two rounds of the season. Boasts a six-point championship lead. But we didn't find out the severity of his illness until after the race when he could just barely get off the bike. I mean, that was a gutsy performance. Well, it makes it even better now that I know he did that being sick. Um, he hasn't been able to back up wins like last last year. You know, he, he won Anaheim, then really was didn't do anything the rest of the season. So for me... For me to be, be a believer and know that he's a championship contender, he had to back up that win, and he needs to go to Anaheim and do the same thing. He needs to be on the podium, and then I think he'll be there for the rest of the year. So I'm interested to see how he'll do. There was some chaos, if you want to call it that, because Zach Osborne got the whole yeah. shot, looked good up front, made it hard for Ken Roxon in the, in the opening laps. You had Eli Tomac 12th on the opening lap, worked his way through the top five. Cian Cirillo looked like he was going to be in the mix. It was a late fall, and he got pushed back as well. But then in amongst all of this chaos, cruising through to third on the night was the 2018 champ, Jason Anderson. He knows how to win. And, uh, you know, you got to think, he, he got hurt at the second round last year. This is the first time he's been on the podium since then. So how ironic, right? Yeah. Second race, he was on the podium last year. Second race this year, he's on the podium. The guy knows how to win. If he can get his starts cleaned up, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna be a real threat for this championship. And his words were, "It's difficult being away like he was last year for the majority of the championship. It's difficult to come back. I'm still kind of getting into my rhythm. So when he finds that rhythm and he finds that mojo, which I think he's looking pretty good with a 5-3 yeah. results for the first two. Look out. Let's change gears. Let's go to the 250 class. Local boy." Austin Faulkner comes from about 300 miles away, had more than 100 people, friends and family here tonight, and he did what he was trying to do last week. Yeah, let's get the win. He rode fantastic, and he needed to rebound from last week's performance. That definitely wasn't him, but I will tell you, he's not winning as far uh, of gaps as he had last year. I mean, he was decimating the field, so the guys have definitely stepped it up, but uh, it was a really, like, veteran ride for him. He didn't make many mistakes, and picture perfect. He gets really good starts, and uh, the, the Forkner that we saw tonight is the guy that I know, and I think that he's going to continue to do that. It's going to be hard for these guys to beat him. They can, but they've got to be up front. I mean, Austin always gets good starts, so if these guys keep spotting him, it's going to be tough for him. Let's come back to the second place man, Justin Cooper, in just a moment. Well done, Brandon Hartraff gets his first yeah. ever 250 main podium, so that was a huge plus. A huge negative and a really unfortunate incident involving the reigning champ, Dylan Frandis. Wrong spot, wrong, to wrong time, got taken out of the race. He ended up getting lapped, didn't even finish on the lead lap. That was tough. He didn't have a result anything like that last year, so we're going to have to see him dig deep. Well, he had to come from behind a couple times. His bike uh, quit on him at San Diego round in the mud, but he didn't finish that far right. back. So uh, he's definitely put himself in a whole victim of circumstance because he got a bad start. So that was really on him, and when you get bad starts, things like that are going to happen. Guys collided in that first rhythm section. Alex Martin hit Moseman, mm -hmm. then Moseman just wiped him out, and then there's nothing he could do. Only thing he could have done better is get a better start. Things collapsed all in the one lap for Geico Honda. Christian Craig crashed and looked to be in quite a bit of pain. Jet Lawrence, the 16-year-old, was in second for a good portion of the race, then dropped back to third. Looked like he was going to get his first podium uh, as far as being a full-time 
uh, Monster Energy Supercross racer. And then something happened with his bike, but he still finished top five. That was a great night for the kid. Yeah, great top five. Uh, a lesson learned. The biggest thing that I take away from Jet Lawrence is how well he was right. I mean, he was all over Austin Fortner, and I think it was a great learning lesson from him. I talked about it on the broadcast during the race. There's no better way to learn. I don't care how many laps you do at the test track or whatever guys are telling you. There's no better way to learn than being behind the best guy in the business. So these two guys clashed at A1. That is Justin Cooper and Austin <laughs> Faulkner. Cooper won Anaheim, Faulkner won here tonight, and Cooper showed a pretty resilient side of himself just to work his way through and get as, as high up as second. So it's game on. Oh, it's game on. I can't wait for it. This is one of those rivalries. You know they don't like each other, but I do believe they respect each other, and that's the important thing, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen. And, hey, we haven't seen the last of Dylan Ferrandez. Right. Are you ready for the next chapter? Are you ready for the next race? So are we. It can't come quick enough, and you'll see it live on NBCSN starting from Anaheim uh, at Angel Stadium of Anaheim at 10 p.m. Eastern next Saturday night. We'll see you then.